introduction. So um, my talk is about the introduction to GANs. GANs stand for Generative Adversarial Networks. And uh, we only have 15 minutes and I'm, I'm sure that nobody wants to have um, talk about mathematics and statistics. So I try to be as practical as possible in my talk. So uh, what are Generative Adversarial Networks and what do they do and how do they do that? First of all, I was asked to bring this slide here for I'm not affiliated with a commercial organization. All right, um, let me start with a question, which is very simple. Can AI generate images of the real world that don't exist? And to make it a little bit more interesting, but look really real. So this question was answered in 2014 by Ian Goodfellow. He had been a PhD student at Stanford and um, he just invented this new architecture of generative adversarial networks when he was going out and having beers with his friends. Um, so after that, um, the AI world exploded with um, new developments of applying uh, this GAN architecture. And uh, it's really interesting because it really did answer this question, can I generate images of the real world and that really look very, very real. So I will show you now some examples so you get a bit of picture. One of the first uh, GANs which caught attention was uh, the DC GAN and it generated bedrooms, bedrooms that did not exist. And um, here's uh, the sample which was shown. So you can see actually uh, that all of these bedrooms look not alike. They are very different. And the GAN generated it randomly. Um, well, the quality of these pictures was not very high. So this was um, created in 2015 and, and um, five years ago. So that means in, in, in the real world time, it's maybe 50 years ago. So um, the next interesting game was uh, Pix to Pix, and it showed uh, a lot of different applications, what you could do with GANs. Um, so you can see, for example, on the left side, you have a scheme of the street. And if you just have a colored scheme of the street, the GAN can generate a whole street, uh, which looks more or less real. And it can do the same with a scheme of a house. It generates a house. Uh, or if you have an um, um, aerial view, you can uh, um, generate a map view. And the same is for, for black and white pictures, um, and uh, which is interesting for fashion. If you have just a sketch, you can generate a product on it. Um, now this can also be transferred to videos. So um, on the left side, so you see the original and on the right side, you see uh, what the GAN did. So it was just given that make a zebra out of this picture and have a look. Okay, my PowerPoint, I think has trouble playing the video. Um, I have to probably crash it and start it anew. Sorry for that. So let me start again. Okay, so for some reason it does not work on this PowerPoint, I apologize. Uh, but you can see in this video that the, the uh, horse is running around as a zebra and it's in real time and it's, it's, it's very, very precise. All right, so I have to crash it again and um,
and start again. Okay. So uh, I think one of the most interesting applications what I've seen in the recent years was to generate uh, faces of real humans. So uh, have a look at these uh, faces and uh, ask yourself how real do they look like? Um, do they look like fake or real? And uh, the truth is now that <clears throat> this uh, GAN could uh, generate so realistic images of, of real humans that it's not possible anymore for humans to, to see the difference anymore. So these um, people are all not really existent and they were generated uh, by, again, from uh, one of the major companies in the AI world, NVIDIA, in their lab. Uh, it's called StyGAN, and this is the improved version of StyGAN 2. So how do GANs do this? How can they generate um, things or faces which they never saw before and that don't exist, but they do really look like the real thing? So I will just explain very briefly the architecture. Um, so what a GAN looks like internally is basically it has two different neural networks, the so-called generator and the discriminator. And they are in a cooperative game. Uh, it's a zero-sum game which uh, um, competes against each other. And the generator has uh, the task to generate samples um, which look um, very much like the real thing. And the discriminator tries to compare these generated uh, samples to the real samples. So in, this, uh, in the last case, it would be real faces. And then um, it makes a decision, this is fake or this is real. And if it's fake, then that means that the generator has to try harder to generate better examples where the discriminator doesn't discriminate anymore. So how does this work internally? Um, this is the only uh, slide where I explain a little bit of the uh, mechanism. So uh, we have two cost functions which compete uh, against each other. So the discriminator tries to maximize its cost function, which is like this is a cost function, but it also adds the cost function of um, um, the um, generator cost. So this red part is exactly the generator cost. So we can um, simplify this equation to this. And it, it really means that uh, both uh, this part, the generator cost is minimized, while at the same time, uh, this, the uh, discriminator cost is maximized. So uh, as you can imagine, this is not a static uh, um, equation, but it's a dynamic equation. And there is a lot of um, trials and errors in iterations. And uh, what we know is then that we don't know exactly what will happen when we start uh, this uh, GAN. But uh, what we know from game theory that um, um, this, uh, these terms the left and the right term, the generator and the discriminator loss, they will um, reach a certain equilibrium. It's called the Nash equilibrium. And it's where uh, both the probability of um, the discriminator uh, loss and the uh, generator loss are equal, which is uh, around 0 to 5. So um, this is all what I will say about the internal function mechanism. But you, you can see that uh, what it requires is actually many, many iterations. And that's why working on a GAN is so time intensive. And because you need to use a, um, a, um, uh, uh, um, graphics card, a GPU, which is uh, very costly. Uh, it means also like working on GANs is very, very cost intensive. So, Everything so far was good, but there are also some known problems. 
So um, GANs will not work well in uh, several cases. First of all, um, what if the discriminator is too strong? So the discriminator always detects, the, oh, that's a fake, that's a fake, that's a fake. So that means that the gradient of the generator vanishes. So uh, the gradient becomes very small. And if that gradient um, becomes very small and because it's gradient descent, uh, there will be no change in the generator anymore. The generator will not try uh, to make better uh, uh, fake samples. The opposite is uh, the, the discriminator is too weak. So actually the discriminator always says, oh, that's a real, that's a real image, that's a real image. So even though uh, the generator did not uh, do a good job. And then uh, there's also the, the case that uh, both the gen generator and discriminator uh, laws are oscillating. So one goes very high, the others goes very down, and then the other goes very high and the, um, the other uh, goes very down. And, and, and then there is an interesting phenomenon, which means that the generator produces images only from a very limited distribution. And I will visualize that in the same slide. So that's called mode collapse. And normally you have a data distribution, let's say this one. And uh, sometimes again, just gets limited to a very uh, narrow distribution within your data distribution. So in that case, the output looks very much alike. In this case, it's <clears throat> the, the GAN produced anime uh, faces and the faces all look very much alike. So that's called mode collapse. <clears throat> now, um, we have limited time. So I just want to tell you um, what it really means uh, for your real life. In your real life, you will see a lot of fakes uh, generated by AI. And you have to be very cautious whenever you see um, images. For example, here. Um, image inpainting is a technique which was actually initially very useful because if you have something obscured in a picture, then you can replace actually what is missing by a GAN and it almost looks like real anymore. But what if um, there was a person who wanted actually to, to be anonymized, but now uh, GANs can actually replace that. So you can see that <clears throat> people who were anonymized, the GAN on the right picture uh, could completely replace and it looks almost like the original picture, right? So the left picture is always the original. Then there was an obscuration and then the right picture was the replacement by AI. And uh, it's almost impossible to anonymize people in the future anymore. <clears throat> Another thing where people probably uh, will play around is in maybe malicious ways is uh, aging. So maybe um, you know that in the presidential campaign, um, <clears throat> often that um, there was a video that uh, Joe Biden was, uh, the, his voice was actually made slower. And also, so he, it was uh, trying to fake that he is mentally not really clear. But you can also do that with the appearance of the person or make it age. So this is actually from my research, my current research, um, so you have these uh, current, uh, you have these images um, of uh, this woman on the left side or these men on the left side. And now we, um, we generate virtual faces and then we can age them um, in actually very, very fine quantities of uh, uh, differences of uh, one decade from 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 69. Um, and uh, you will not be able to see the difference anymore in the future. And, but this will probably be used in the future by, uh, by people who want to harm politicians, for example. And um, just an outlook for the future, because we are almost done in this talk. Um, GANs only started to exist in 2014. It's just immense how much they improved over the years. And I just give you a visualization of this progress. Just for making um, real faces, this is uh, what it uh, changed. Like 2014, it was very pixely. And 2015, it became better. But also, it was very blurry in a certain edges. 2016, it started to become better, but in lower resolution. 
in 2017, that's when Stigen emerged. That's when uh, um, they reach a performance where the human eye is not any good anymore to, to distinguish the difference. And in the last two years, uh, 2019, 20, uh, we reached in almost all cases a um, performance of GANs which is indistinguishable to the human eye. So what is the summary? First of all, GANs generate realistically looking images by two competing neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. Then the evolution of GANs has reached the ability of creating realistically looking faces in 2017 and after that, uh, even better in, in more domains. And finally, in the future, the authenticity of photos on social media must be questioned and tested. So this is uh, uh, a note of caution and I hope uh, you can uh, try to incorporate that in your real life and when you're teaching actually your children. Thank you.